Um, clearly, there, uh, uh, there are changes taking place uh, in uh, the United States, political changes, Israel, uh, the Middle East and North Africa. They all interact with each other. They're all having, not all, um, they're all uh, having changes of government, elections of various kinds um, that are leading to uh, interacting uh, different perspectives on how to go forward uh, in, the, uh, in the future. Um, I'm, um, I speak um, on all of the topics that we're de uh, dealing with. Um, I've been in, uh, involved in Israel, you probably know, initially with Ehud Barak and, and the Labor Party and with the center left and peace camp over a, uh, over a long period. But I've also been in, uh, involved through the Israel Project. Um, with op the, both the government and opposition um, over almost a, uh, a decade, uh, meeting with them regularly on the research that we do uh, in the U.S., in Europe, uh, among Muslim communities uh, in Europe, um, uh, in the Middle East, and ongoing research amongst, um, you know, Palestinians. Um, I'm also, um, and probably what you're most interested in, is the work that, uh, that I do uh, together with James Carville with uh, Democracy Corps, um, on uh, national polls um, following the, the current presidential contest and trends in, those, uh, in, that, uh, in that contest. Um, and so I'm happy in the questioning to go on any tangent um, that you want to uh, go. I'll, you know, at least I will have a, a surface knowledge um, you know, as you enter those various um, topics. Uh, but let me start with the just to put some uh, information on the um, on the table on the on the electoral context because there's just no question um, that all you know all of these uh, societies are uh, are in the are in the lead up um, to making uh, electoral choices um, that have an impact um, on going forward. Uh, how people um, address the Middle East uh, during that process is something that you are focused on uh, mainly. Um, I look at this uh, election as a very close uh, contest. I view it as a uh, uh, as a you know uh, Obama as a 50-50 election right now. This week, I probably err on, this, uh, on the plus side of the 50. For me, a plus means the Democrats are more likely um, to win. I probably err on the plus side of 50 50, um, but I was on the uh, negative side of 50 uh, 50 for, you know, for, you know, for probably a year. Um, and it took uh, Republicans that worked very, very hard um, to, to, to move uh, the numbers. Uh, but you can't, you know, you, you're still dealing with a, a president whose approval rating, um, you know, is 44 percent. In our latest um, poll, he gets 47 percent of the vote, and I view incumbents um, as getting what they get. Bill Clinton always got what he got. When he, his last poll was 49 percent in his last election, he got in, in, in 96, and he got, you know, 49 percent. Um, I think that Obama, you know, will, President Obama will be, you know, will get his, you know, will get that, you know, uh, number. Um, he also has, given the economy, given, you know, overall leadership style, um, the groups that have held back the most are, you know, essentially blue-collar workers and non-college voters who are concentrated in states like Pennsylvania and Ohio that mean when you're, you know, polling at 47 percent and have those kinds of challenges and concentration in those states, you have to assume um, that we're dealing with a 50-50 difficult you know, election for the president, given the uh, economy. Uh, the, there, is all, there is no chance that he will, would choose uh, to spend any capital um, dealing with the Israeli-Palestinian issues or other issues that uh, related to that process that he was so invested in at various points in his uh, um, you know, presidency. Um, he lost support, <clears throat> you know, um, um, Jewish support, you know, during, you know, periods, but it is very hard to look at it now and think that that's either a factor in his decisions um, or much of a factor in the election. I'll, 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 I'll speak just briefly about the, the Jewish vote, and I'll go back to if, if it's a, if one wants to, you know, uh, discuss it. But he's not going to spend political capital, you know, on this, um, and I've actually thought for a long time that as long as he presumed um, that Israel and Palestinians uh, were uh, were so difficult to move um, that this was given the economy. You know, <clears throat> once it became evident that we was, he was not going to get a trajectory upwards on the economy, um, that would create a climate in which he could embrace such issues. And once it, he had to be clear that only a total focus on the economy and jobs would get him reelected. Um, you know, when they made that decision, 
Um, that was also a decision not to bring, you know, in um, uh, certainly not the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. He's generally helped um, by uh, his handling of the war on terrorism and foreign policy. Uh, his ratings are higher on those issues, um, about 10 points, sometimes 10 points higher or more on those issues than on his overall approval rating and much higher um, than on the, you know, the economy. And, you know, I've listened to people, you know, in this process, there is a comfort level with the way he deals with those issues. They think he's willing um, to kill people <laughs> if necessary in terms of America's uh, security. And he's also he's willing to do what needs to be done. But he also is seen to be tr to moderate our engagement abroad at a time when we need to att uh, address America, America's problems at home. Uh, Iran you know, poses a challenge, uh, um, and I don't, you know, I don't know where that goes. I have no inside information on the uh, Iran question. Um, they clearly would rather Iran not, uh, that there not be any action against uh, Iran or even action that affects oil prices uh, in the period before the uh, elections. They may not, they may not want it after the election, but they certainly, but I would not make, the, I would not assume, you know, that that kind of event, uh, the Republican debate, you know, describes this as something that would, you know, would, you know, create an opportunity for Republicans if that kind of instability happened in the Middle East. I would not assume that. Presidents actually usually do fairly well where they have control of national security resources um, and the uh, and, and a large stage from which to advance Americans, uh, America's interests. Uh, I'm, I'm sure the president doesn't want to go down that road. The economy is the number one uh, priority for the president. I just wouldn't presume that there's an automatic uh, play out of an Iran uh, scenario uh, into the uh, presidential election. The Jewish vote uh, is, uh, I'm assuming that he's going to win overwhelmingly amongst the Jewish voters, whether he wins with 80%, 75%, 70% matters not at all uh, in, in terms of his uh, election. Uh, there's some evidence that in the period of the first initial tension, uh, with the uh, with Israel and um, and Prime Minister Netanyahu, there was some evidence in that period that that is the gap between his approval rating amongst Jews and approval rating uh, overall. You know that gap right at the outset uh, began to drop. It's now about 13 points. It's about 13 points higher amongst Jews than over you know over, you know overall. But that's been stable now for a couple of years. Um, that it is you know there's no evidence that recent, anything going on in recent events. As it has had any impact uh, on a standing uh, amongst Jews. Uh, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, at U.S. policy toward Israel is not much of a factor in my experience uh, on the Jewish vote. Uh, the, uh, the, if you want to understand American politics and how it stands out from, the, uh, you know, from other countries um, and, where this, and where this is situated, um, you focus in on the cultural polarization of the of, of the American parties um, and how that evolved over time, deepened over time, uh, deepened through the Clinton presidency, deepened under, you know, uh, George Bush. It's been broken up, uh, by the economic crash and people forced on economic issues. But what we've watched is a world, you know, is the Democratic Party representing a collection of groups that have a worldview that's more secular, uh, more, you know, we're looking more focused on, it, um, edu you know, education, more, a whole range of uh, issues. I won't dwell on the, sp the specifics of the ideological perspective, um, and a conservative uh, worldview um, that George Bush, above all, uh, intrusive on cultural issues, religious-centered, uh, uh, with big differences amongst the parties, most of all on religious attendance, uh, church attendance, synagogue attendance as the as the you know as the main kind of main you know divider, and it's part of why we're, our politics is so polarized is that we think uh, we're not just dealing with differences of policy or differences of economic policy. We think worldviews are at stake uh, when each president is in uh, in office, um, and foreign policy also tends to get embedded you know in you know in that. Jews are at the center, if not the leaders, of the block and worldview that uh, centered around the liberal democratic block. 
They were the voters most opposed to the Iraq war. They were the mo voters most opposed to George Bush. Uh, if you look at our own polls or other, you know, other um, polls, um, views of Romney or the presidential candidates, there is no doubt in my view that Jews will line up and probably in advance of other groups that are part of the Democratic coalition. The more they watch this primary process, you know, even if Romney is seen as, you know, more moderate, they're looking at a party that underlies every reason why most American Jews don't like Orthodox Jews um, are being played out within the Republican Party. There's just, there's just every reason to believe that American Jews will line up with that many decade long process um, that has created this cultural polarization, you know, in our, you know, our politics. Um, we have in parallel, you know, Israel, uh, in which the, um, I have not thought that the uh, prime minister would move uh, forward and take uh, risks on, in the in dealings with the Palestinians, again, with difficult to expend capital um, when there's such a clear domestic cost um, to making those changes. Um, and at every point, as I've watched it, I believe he has acted to preserve his coalition and the prospect of uh, uh, preserving um, a right we're right-wing coalition, um, and the competition with Lieberman uh, to the right, which is real, um, in terms of which is the largest party. The competition with Kadima um, has met for the largest party. Remembering that Kadima was first asked to, you know, organize uh, the government was unable to because of his dealings with Shas, but the but they were they have been within a few points of each other in the polling until labor has surged and we've seen a a drop down in Kadima standing. But as long as that was true, those two parties competed to be the largest party. Lieberman was an immense threat to the right uh, because he pulled voters away from Likud and um, reduced the prospect that Likud would uh, end the election uh, as the largest party. And while it is true that there, if you look at the Knesset, there is a large majority that we would describe as part of the national right wing bloc. Um, that's not true once you get Shas and others into the process of negotiation, in which is not, it's not certain um, that you end up with a right-wing government um, in this collection of you know, parties. So the prime minister, I think, at each point has opted to preserve his uh, domestic um, governing coalition. Uh, the, uh, there is some prospect of uh, early elections, at least I understand the rationale for it. You know, in the end, most of, you know leaders that I know end up holding on to power, long, you know, as long as they can. Why take a, you know a risk? But there are great risks in not going um, to early uh, elections. Uh, the reason why Netanyahu emerged so strongly is he, the last elections were held during Gaza, um, where those uh, where those issues you know created a national security climate um, and an anti. Palestinian climate, um, which was one that clearly favored uh, Likud and the right. Um, a national security context, particularly Iran, um, is a context uh, which, fav uh, which would favor uh, Likud and the, and, uh, and the right. Um, they, there's some argument in terms of whether this is a window of opportunity for acting, but there's no doubt about the political window. Um, that exists uh, in the period before the uh, U.S. Uh, elections. And there's a general assumption, I think, is a, that if Obama is reelected, and they may now see that, they may also be seeing about 50-50, you know, uh, possibility and, uh, um, as they watch the election process, you know, or at least 50-50, they are convinced that the president will bring pressure on Israel on a range of issues. Um, and so that the having a free hand um, to deal with Israel's needs and also having a long four-year period in government um, uh, and having um, and facing the threat of two issues that have emerged within Israeli society over the last year. You know, one are, are the social protests, um, which Mariv has said that I'm responsible for, but I, would, I can say right here on the record, I had nothing to do with. <laughs> um, but the social protests, and if you look at what's happened to the uh, Labor's vote, in particular, um, in the um, uh, with the, uh, the election of new leadership uh, there, they've surged, you know, perhaps around 18, uh, you know, mandates. You know, in the uh, in the in the current climate, they've been the main beneficiary, you know, of that process. Uh, but you've also have uh, Lapid um, uh, and his party you know, polling, you know, 12 
mandates, um, and that's driven both by the social protest and the reaction um, against the Haredim um, and the uh, religious issues that are, you know, there. You know, if you look at the possibility of new Shas leadership um, and those two things which are driving up the labor vote and independent vote um, with some uncertainty on Shas, um, there are reasons why you may be nervous, you know, about putting your, you know, your fate in the hands of the, you know, of the Israeli uh, electorate. Nonetheless, if Iran is the context in which there is broad support for the uh, seriousness of the threat facing, you know, Israel, uh, if Iran is the context from which the elections take place, uh, then that is an opportunity to push those issues, which aren't going to go away, to push those issues, um, you know, further aside and also get yourself in a position to deal with whatever happens in the U.S. elections. Let me stop there, and I'll obviously take this wherever you wish.